Hi guys, tonight I'm going to show you another flower arrangement. I went to Publix again, the grocery store, and got a couple bunches of flowers. Three bunches for 12 bucks. So I got a half a dozen roses for four dollars. You can't beat that. So I'm actually going to do a couple different videos tonight and show you some things to do with roses and they're going to be a little bit more dramatic than your traditional flower arrangements. Again, I prefer using a knife, not using clippers, although you will see me using clippers tonight on some of my greens. And speaking of greens, remember it is okay to pull greens out of your yard, just make sure you know what you're pulling on. So these I love, these are elephant ears and these do come out of my yard. I am going to start with these. I already have my foam taped onto what I'm using tonight. It's a really heavy piece of slate. I absolutely love this piece of slate. This is the wet foam. Remember, there's two different kinds, wet and dry, taped onto my board so it's not going to slide anywhere if we move the arrangement around the table. So I'm going to jump right in so I can maybe make a little shorter video this time. Okay, I'm going to start with my greens and I'm going to start by covering up that piece of tape going right down the front there. Remember, you can enter your green at an angle. You do not have to stab from straight above or straight to the side. I actually angled that up so that it comes nice and has that nice little swoop down there. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing, making a tall piece in the back. And believe it or not, all I'm using for this first arrangement is just three roses. So it is going to save some roses for another arrangement. And I am trimming this ear, this elephant ear, into pieces. These things are so versatile and they really, really do last well. I always tell people if you're going to use stuff out of your yard, I suggest going and trimming a bunch of stuff. Again, make sure you know what it is. Put it into a base and see what lasts. And then you'll know what you can use readily. Okay, so I've got some height going on. I've got something going down the front. And I'm not even coming out the sides this time because like I said, this is gonna be kind of dramatic, okay? The next thing I'm gonna hit this with is some magnolia leaves. I love these things. They are nice and dark, dark green. I'm gonna give this a little bit of stand up in the back there because those, those magnolia leaves are really nice and tight. They're nice and strong. They'll hold that elephant ear up and make sure it stays really well. And then I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna show you where I'm going here. Let me pick this up. So I have some in the back. I have some covering up the front. This one right here, I'm actually gonna put right in the middle. It's gonna go right in the middle next to my tape and it's gonna go right in the middle equal distance from there too. And you'll see why in just a little bit. We always, always start with greens. Okay, now let me get a little bit more base going here. I do have to cover these sides a little bit, but I don't want so much big stuff coming out. This is Ligustrum, another thing, right out of the yard. I love these too. Nice dark green, just like those magnolias. And these things last and last. They're really good just for covering up, getting that base covered up. Again, don't be afraid to come in at an angle, which is what I'm going to do with this piece right here. Oh, I might get a bigger piece. Hang on. Now I'm going to put him over here. I mentioned before, if you're going to put a flower in and pull it back out and put it back in, you've got to recut your flower. Greens, you don't have to worry about that so much. Same with cutting your greens, especially if they're nice, hard, stemmy ones. It's okay. You do not have to worry about them quite so much. Okay. This guy, he's a little longer. I can angle him up and use him to come down and help cover up that front there, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Get a nice stemmy piece there that I can ang angle. I'm angling, I know you probably can't see that, but I'm coming up like this, and that's making my greens go down and cover up the outside of my base. And my base, again, you don't have to be spending a fortune. It's Tupperware, right out of my Tupperware drawer. That's all that it is. In fact, I don't even think this is actually Tupperware. I think this is the cheap stuff I got from Ikea. All right, I'm going around with my little angles, just covering up my base everywhere. That's all I'm doing real quick. And then we will get right to the roses. So I need one more here. I want to get this back covered up. 
even though the back won't show much. And I still like to cover my base. Okay, roses. So I'm going to start with my tallest one. And when you go to select roses, people always ask me, how can I tell if they're fresh? All right, I don't know how good you can see this, but this rose in this hand is what I call blown open. You see how he's kind of unraveled in the center? He no longer has that perfectly round shape that these two have. So that's one way to tell is by looking at them. But even when they're a little more closed up, there's still a way to tell how fresh they are. It's by squeezing the base of their head, this base right here. When I squeeze him, he has no give. He is total mush. So he's a really beautiful rose, but he's not gonna last long, okay? These guys, when I squeeze them, this guy's got a little bit of a firmness to him. This guy's nice and firm, so he's gonna last a little bit longer. It's a quick and easy way. Just don't kill him, but give him a gentle little squeeze and you'll get an idea of how fresh that rose is that you're about to buy. Okay, so my first one, I want nice and tall, and I'm actually gonna bring him up a little higher than these greens, so I'm not really cutting much off of him. A nice angled cut, okay? And he is gonna go right in the very middle. I'm right next to my tape. And I'm gonna put him right like that, okay? My next one down, I'm gonna make him, see my green there? I told you there was a reason for that one. That's kind of my guide. I wanna get his head just a little bit above that one, okay? So let me kind of measure him cross my fingers and hope that my measurement's right. Let's see, I didn't put it in the green yet, so, or in the foam. Let's see. I got him, he's pretty good. I'm working from the back, so I think I wanna shorten him just a tiny bit. Do not put him in the same hole. If you go back in, don't put him in the same hole. You've created a void space and they're not gonna get a good drink. Okay, so he's got a new spot there, and he's just a little bit lower. I like him so much better right there. All right, now I am looking at the heads, and I'm trying to find the one that I think is the prettiest. I like that one. He's going to be my focal. He's going to be right in front, and he is going to be a nice shorty, like this. Do you see what happened when I cut him? He actually came apart right where his leaf was. And he didn't really cut nice. He kind of popped off. So I'm going to make sure to give him a good cut so that he's really going to drink good. And this guy, I'm going to angle just a little bit. He's just angled slightly out to you. And I got to turn this around and look at it because I might want to change their heights. I do. I want to change this guy. I want to make this guy just a little bit shorter still. Not totally happy with them. Don't be afraid to cut your flowers. Just keep on cutting them until you're happy. You'll kind of start getting an idea of, of what, what works and where your lines need to be. All right, I'm gonna clean some of this off the table. I'm gonna turn him around again. I need to be able to look from the front a little bit. Okay, now. You know, I've been turning you around too much. I'm pulling your greens out. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more of this elephant ear in here. I want just a little bit more filled in on this green. A nice short piece. Okay, get that in there. All right. Okay, now I'm just going to go back to, let's see, what do I want to fill in here with? I think I want a little bit more magnolia. I really love these magnolia leaves. And I've got room for a couple little shorties here that can kind of outline this guy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a couple little short ones. Okay outline this little guy that's up here. Okay. All right. One more here. Find 
find him a spot. Okay, now, one of the things I got out of the yard this time is this grass. I absolutely love using grass in arrangements. Now, this kind of grass, I call it sawgrass. I'm not sure what its technical name is. I, I think I've heard some people call it fountain grass. Um, I have looked it up. It is, it's definitely not poisonous, so that's good. I feel safe using it. Now, grasses. I'm going to put him together. I just cut them all off so that they kind of are all together there. Okay. And I'm going to tuck these guys in the back. All right. Now, what I like about these grasses is I grab onto them and trim them so that they're all even. I've got kind of a nice sharp point on them there. And I'm going to bend them down and find a spot in that foam and tuck them into the foam. See if I can get them to behave and go in right the first time. All right, now see how these, this type of grass does not make a real smooth bend. I happen to like that. I like that little ge geometric, I think that would be, geometric shape that they make. I'm gonna do another little plump of them over on this side as well. There are grasses that do bend nice. There is a grass that uh, you can buy from a florist shop called Bear Grass. And it does get that really lovely, soft, round bend to it. And if you prefer that, those are wonderful too. For this style arrangement, I just like that little extra geometric shape that these guys make. Let me grab a couple more little pieces here. Oh, there's a nice little short one. I like him. Okay. And let's go with these guys right now. All right, these guys. Oh, see, I call them sawgrass. I know you can't see it, but they have little teeth on them, and they are literally sticking to my fingers because of those little teeth. They kind of, kind of like the legs on a uh, grasshopper or something, you know, how they kind of grab into you. Okay, so again, I'm going to grab my ends here, and I'm going to cut so that I have them together, and bend them down, and I'm going to tuck them into the foam. All right, and I think I'm going to do one more little clump right here. Just a really, really, let's see if I can find some little tiny guys here that I can work with. Actually, I've got a couple over here. We cut earlier. I'm going to cut these ends off. Get those guys out of the way. And we'll go down to this side of this. Rows, put them in there, and bend them. Tuck those into my foam. All right. Okay, I got to turn this around to me again so I can take a look. Sorry to keep on to turn around tonight, but it's hard to work from the back here and know exactly what's going on. Oops, I just pulled him out. Sorry guy. Go back down in there. Come on. That's the only problem. If you don't have two or more of them together, just getting one to stick in there. He doesn't quite have the strength in himself. Come on. Oh, now you've both done me in. get you back together here. There we go. That's the secret, having the two of them together and getting them to let go of my fingers. Come on. <laughs> They're defying me. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Yes, I'm really happy with how that's looking. Okay, let me turn them back around to the front of you. And since this is for a fall arrangement, I actually 
want to, you can stop right there, but I actually want to add just a couple of little palms in here. I just want it to look a little bit more fallish. So I'm tucking these guys way down in and I'm just going to do a little trail. I'll probably do about five of them here. One, two, and I'm doing different kinds of buds. That one's not very open. I'll do him down here. Just doing just a little trail of them. Going right across the base here. And they're really tucked in there because I don't want them to take away from my roses. And I think I just made some more grass pop out, didn't I? Come on, you guys, you're making me look bad here. I hope you guys have easier, easier time with your grasses than I obviously am. I have had to take grasses before, tie them onto a twist tie, and then push my twist ties down into my foam. But that kind of takes time, and I was hoping to not have to do that tonight. Okay. There you go, I'm gonna turn it. I hope that you can see where these daisies are on the side. I just did a couple, I just wanted to add a little fall color to it, a little bit more than just our roses. So, nice, simple, cheap, oh my goodness, cheap, but yet dramatic. And I've got a couple more arrangements I'm gonna do because I have three more roses. So stick with me and watch my next one. And as always, please be sure to check out my website deepsouthgreens.com. I sell It Works as well as doing flowers. It Works is an awesome company. Totally all natural supplements. It'll get you healthy. And arrangements.pro. It's not my website. That's my friend's website. She does nothing but wedding flowers and she does a really great job. So you guys, I hope you try this rose arrangement and have a great night.